Hi, thank you for turning on the DVD. Uh, we're starting a new series on John and the the adventure that he had with Jesus. I'm just excited about this whole idea of adventure. I think it's on the map again. I think there's a lot of people who are talking about this, but Jesus takes us off the map uh, in adventure with him. So uh, looking at John, because he just has the most incredible life with Jesus. Brilliant. Um, starting from his calling, Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 4, and it just says, As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into a lake, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee and his brother John, who was seen Seen was also the son of Zebedee. They were in a boat with their father, Zebedee, I just love saying that name, uh, preparing their nets. Jesus called them and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. And it's this idea that Jesus invites John onto this adventure with him, that uh, John has no idea where he's going. Uh, if someone said, come and follow me, the first question in my mind would be, where to? And John doesn't ask that. He, if he did, he wouldn't have got an answer to that. What he knows is that he's following Jesus in discipleship, in apprenticeship, in uh, copycat, uh, in follow my leader, and mainly to be with Jesus. And that's the invitation that Jesus extends to us. And uh, I just think that's so exciting and interesting and just brilliant. Yeah, I spoke a little bit on Sunday night about apprenticeship and what it means to follow a rabbi um, and I know that in that culture to follow a rabbi really did mean to to follow them as in copy them everywhere they went and the phrase kind of being covered in the dust of your rabbi was quite an important one that you followed so closely behind them that you were covered in the dust that their feet kicked up. Yeah. In this picture we get a uh an entrepreneur, John, who is a risk taker, he's a businessman, he's invested in his boat, he's um, uh, invested in a partnership and he's a risk taker and that just appeals to him. And Jesus comes to this entrepreneur and says, look, you can, you can follow me, you can shake the dice and take a chance and go for it and we're going to go for this together. And, and I think sometimes our Christianity has lost that sense of... Uh, um, uh, just entrepreneurial, risk-taking, whatever Jesus says I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to throw my lot in with this. And maybe for some of us that was our experience exactly, and I hope that church hasn't beaten that out of you. I think that if church is going to become um, relevant, if it's going to continue to speak to the culture, then the church has really got to take some risks. Um, and I'm really proud to be part of this church here, which the reason I think it's is grown in the way it's had is because the leadership here are willing to take risks. Um, and, and I think that God blesses people who, as you say, roll yeah. the dice for him. Yeah, it, it's, it, I think that's exciting for us and that, that John was probably in that category. But he was also probably in another category, which is a, a group of people who had missed out. Uh, most people would want to follow a rabbi uh, but only if they got to uh, RE U to do RE at university, whereas John almost certainly did his A-levels in RE because everybody did. Um, but the, the elite went to uh, rabbi school and followed a rabbi. Uh, but if you didn't quite make it, you went into your father's business, which is obviously what John was doing here. And Jesus gives him another chance. And this is so much more exciting than following any other rabbi. Uh, and Jesus... Uh, it just gives this guy who probably thought that his family business is good but it could have been so much better and he gives this guy an opportunity to follow him and uh, maybe that doesn't speak to your generation but it certainly speaks to a lot of people in my generation that we feel our best life is behind us that that you know if we're gonna see Jesus do anything in us then it's that was then whereas mm. actually Jesus pulls John to a place where he uh, can accomplish all the dreams that he had uh, from before. Absolutely, and I think we probably can ditch some of the, the generational mentality of we're praying that the new generation will rise up and you, 
and part of me always just thinks like stop expecting someone else to do it and and your age should never be a barrier and I've heard a lot of sermons about that saying oh you don't let your people despise your youth um, I think it's important to read from this that this guy he's not the up-and-coming cream of the crop Jesus calls you where you're at mm. so don't wait for another generation to do it yeah. whichever one you're yeah. in the rising Caleb generation <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> uh, Another thing I just want to point out from this is in Matthew's Gospel, this is a very sudden thing. It's a very, um, uh, you know, immediate. Jesus uh, comes to John, says, follow me. John immediately gets up and does it. Um, in John's Gospel and, and in other Gospels as well, Mark's Gospel too, uh, it's a much more uh, considered thing. It's, uh, for some of us, it's a leap in the dark. And that's how Matthew uh, seems to portray it. But for John, it's not a leap in the dark. It's, it's a step of faith. Yeah. And John, it seems, has been following John the Baptist. He's uh, heard of Jesus. He may even have seen the Spirit come on Jesus at, at Jesus' baptism. And uh, he even decides to follow Jesus before Jesus calls him. If, as is most likely, John chapter 1 verse uh, 35, um, it says, The next day... John the Baptist was there again with two of his disciples and when he saw Jesus passing by he said look the Lamb of God when the two disciples this is two disciples of John the Baptist so presumably this uh, it seems to be Andrew and John uh, when the two disciples heard him say this they followed Jesus mm. turning around Jesus saw them uh, saw them following and asked what do you want and they said where are you staying and his, Jesus says come and you will see and so they went and spent the day with him. And uh, it seems that it was around that time that Jesus calls John. But it wasn't a leap in the dark. This is someone he'd seen, he'd investigated, he'd heard about, he knew was special because of the Spirit coming on him. He knew that he was the Lamb of God because John had told him. He spent some time with Jesus, but now he was committed to a lifetime of discipleship and following Jesus. And for some of us, that's where we're at. Jesus has been stirring something up in us. And today's the day when we say, yes, I'm going to change everything because I hear your call on mm. my life to follow you. I think that's one of the many great things about Alpha, which says following Jesus, it doesn't have to be um, an ignorant leap of faith. Um, it can be, you can test this, you can come and ask some questions. Um, so if you are that person or know someone like him, Alpha on Thursday. <laughs> Absolutely. But for all of us, let's take this uh, adventure with John and with Jesus as we say yes to him, to obeying, to following, to copying, to imitating, uh, to being a disciple of Jesus. Let's go for it together. Bless you. See you in a bit. Bye-bye.